Hi, I'm Claire Mark, and this little tutorial is on Warrior One. So, Warrior One is one of those poses that I think is used a lot in the practice and um, is probably not taught as much as it should be taught because Warrior One is in Sun Salutation B and it's a pose that you kind of flow into very quickly for a breath if you're doing a classic Sun Salutation B. And so it's not held for very long a lot of the times which, by the way, is probably not so bad because Warrior One is actually a really hard pose to hold correctly and do correctly for a long period of time. So we're going to chat a little bit about the alignment of Warrior One, but we're going to first focus on high lunge so you can get a sense of what you actually want to have happening ideally in your hips and in your legs when we're moving towards Warrior One. Okay, so um, Eugenie's going to come here, put her hands onto the blocks. You can just lift your hips up and kind of do a forward fold for a moment. So if you don't have blocks at home and you're really open in your hamstrings, you probably don't need them. But if you're at home and you don't have blocks and your hamstrings are not very open, you can always put books underneath your hands and that would be fine too. Okay. But if you're okay here, you're going to step your right foot between your hands or blocks and step your left foot straight back behind you towards the back edge of your mat. And then you want to wiggle your feet long enough apart that your front knee is on top of your heel and your thigh is aiming towards being parallel to the floor. Back toes are tucked under with the heel straight. So take a glance back here for a moment, like look down your torso towards your left leg and make sure that your heel isn't turning in or out, okay? So it's really nice and straight. Ball mount of the foot stays rooted. And then as you press into your feet evenly, you're gonna just rise up to standing and place your hands right onto your hips. So, to start the pose, we want to keep the torso very vertical and the front knee on top of your heel. Back leg is aiming towards going straight by lifting your inner left thigh towards the ceiling. And for high lunge, we really want to square the hips forward as much as possible so your upper inner thighs are scissoring together. The last breath, you'll just take your hands and reach straight up towards the ceiling with your palms shoulder distance apart. And then try to straighten your arms as much as you can. Like lift, lift, lift your rib cage as evenly as you can up off your hips and waist. Okay, good. Hands to the blocks. And then look forward and we'll just switch legs. So take your left foot forward and step your right foot back. And again, we'll take a nice long stance. That's great. Yeah, don't go any further. Okay, good. And root down through your feet and we'll inhale and reach your arms up. So... It's a tricky pose. It is not easy to do. Front knee is stacked on top of the heel, thigh parallel to the floor, and the back heel, again, isn't turning in or out. It's nice and lifted. And what we really want to focus on is pulling your inner right thigh up towards the ceiling, which is going to help to square your hips forward and the shoulders are squared forward as you lift up tall through your fingertips. Take another breath here and imagine lifting your back ribs as much as your front ribs. So stretch your fingers as high as you can towards the ceiling. Okay. Good. Exhale, hands to the floor, and then just step your right foot forward, and we'll take your left foot back again. Now, you're going to keep your hands on the blocks this time, and for a moment, widen your feet. So wiggle your right foot a little bit to the right. Good. And the left foot a little bit to the left, so that your feet are, if I were going to step the feet back to um, the same plane forward with your left foot, your feet would be hip distance apart. Okay, and then we'll just switch sides. So we're just adding kind of one thing at a time. You can look forward and step up with your left foot and step your right foot back. And again, we want the feet to have a little bit of width between them so you're not standing on a tightrope. And the reason why we're doing that is it's going to be much easier to actually square your hips once we get into warrior one. If you were going to come up into the high lunge, it's actually easier if you're in this position. It's easier for balance than if your feet were in one straight line. Okay, we'll switch again. Right foot forward and left foot straight back behind you. Now, this time pause. Your front foot is pointing straight forward and gaze again down your torso towards your left leg. You're gonna place your left foot onto the floor on an angle at about 45 degrees. And again, check to make sure that your feet have a little bit of width to them. So if you're lined up heel to heel, move your left foot a smidge over to the left side, Just keep your hands on the blocks, and then draw your outer right hip back, bend your front knee and hold it there for a moment, okay? Good, lift your back heel, look forward, and we'll step up to the top. We're just switching back and forth here because holding this pose can actually get pretty challenging. So we're gonna kind of move back and forth between the two sides. As you gaze down your torso towards your right leg, place your right foot onto the floor at an angle of 45 degrees. 
That's so that your toes are in line with your back knee and so that your inner right thigh can lift up towards the ceiling in the same way you did in the high lunge. Your front knee is reaching forward so it stacks on top of your heel. Heart and crown of the head are reaching forward. Back leg stays really straight and strong. Okay, good. Look forward and step your right foot to the top of your space. And then, um, Eugenie, you can come down to a kneeling position. I'll have you rest for just a second. So one thing that's really important with Warrior One, or I should say is really challenging, is, you know, as we're in the lunge position with the back heel lifted, as I was pointing out, it's very easy to keep your hips squared. When you drop your back heel to the floor, as Eugenie did in that last variation, you can see my hips start to turn to the side and this leg actually pivots out to the side. And what we actually want it to do is turn forward so that that inner left thigh is lifting towards the ceiling and the hips are moving towards squaring to the front edge of the mat in the same way you had in the high lunge. Now the tricky thing is, for most of us, having your back foot on the floor is gonna prevent you from actually squaring your hips forward. So we'll work on squaring the shoulders forward and we'll work on lifting the back inner thigh towards the ceiling, dropping the outer hip towards the floor, but we're not gonna get really stuck on having the hips totally squared because for most of us, again, that's really pretty challenging and takes a long time of practice to find our way to get there. Okay, so we'll bring your hands onto the blocks again. This is just to help us kind of find a graceful, easy transition to get into the pose. You can step your right foot forward and bring your left foot back. And again, widen your feet a little bit. Good. Place your back heel onto the floor at a 45 degree angle. So your left toes are pointing towards the front left corner of your mat. Firm your outer right hip in. And before we rise up to standing, I want you to really focus on your back leg for a moment. Try to imagine picking your inner left thigh up towards the ceiling and keep that as you ground your outer foot into the floor. Now we're gonna come rising up to standing. So we'll inhale up and reach your arms straight up alongside your ears. Just have your hands shoulder distance. Okay, fantastic. So you're gonna square your shoulders forward as much as you can. Find that deep bend in your front leg where your knee is stacked on top of the heel. Nice, Eugenie. Lift your navel towards your spine and then do your work. See if you can spin this back inner thigh towards the ceiling. Drop your outer left hip towards the floor a little bit more, straightening your back leg by grounding your back heel. Take one more breath. If it feels comfortable, you can look up and maybe bring your palm palms all the way to touch. Okay, hands to the blocks. Carefully step forward. You can lift your back heel, look forward, and we'll switch sides. Right foot steps all the way back. Place your back heel to the floor at a 45 degree angle. Find the pose in your legs first, because this is really challenging. Before we even come up, I want you to bring your attention into your back leg. Because it's the back leg and you can't see it when you're in the pose, it actually makes it a lot more um, challenging to find it. So work on spinning your inner right thigh towards the ceiling, dropping the outer heel towards the floor, bend your front knee and firm your outer left hip in. So we're going to keep all of that power, that energy, that strength in this warrior one. Okay, now push into your front foot and slowly rise up. As you rise up, you're going to reach your arms up alongside your ears and bend your front knee. Good. Stack your knee right on top of your heel, square your shoulders forward, and then bring your attention, your mind's eye, into your back leg. Can you find that rotation, that lift in your inner thigh, drop your outer right hip towards the floor. Good, keep your back leg nice and straight. Lift your rib cage, and if it feels okay, you can on the last breath take your gaze up and bring your palms to touch. Okay, hands to the blocks. And then carefully step forward. Good, inhale, and fold forward, exhale. Okay, so I have to say, in my classes when I teach a level one or a level one two, I rarely teach Warrior One. I think it is such a tricky pose and so challenging to do well. Um, and obviously there are many different ways to come into it. So this was a way I think is nice to come into it. I'm going to have you move, move the blocks off to the side. I want to show one other way to get into it, which is from Downward Facing Dog. It's a little bit more advanced to come into the pose from Down Dog, but because of Sun Salutation B, you're welcome to step back, yeah, to Down Dog at any time. Because Sun Salutation B has Warrior One in it, I just wanted to go through that transition from Down Dog into Warrior One so that if you're working on Sun Salutation B, you can work on that a little bit. 
And there's a couple different ways to do it. Um, first, a lot of times in class, people will say to lift one leg up first, but we're not going to do that. Um, in like classic sun salutation B, we don't actually lift the back leg up to step forward. We're trying to use a little more awareness of your core and core strength to step the foot forward. So we'll even see if you can keep your palms grounded. Look forward. You can lift your heels and step your right foot up. Remember to the right side of your mat, place your back heel to the floor. Firm your outer hips in and then inhale and we'll rise up. Now as you rise up, there's a tendency to pull back away from the front leg, but see if you can descend straight down to that 90 degree angle and then work on scissoring the upper inner thighs together, stretching your fingertips towards the ceiling. Only take your gaze up if your neck is okay and then you can even bring your palms to touch pushing through the back heel. Hands to the floor around your front foot and we'll step straight back into down dog. Okay, ground your hands. And again, lift your heels here to create a little more space and then look forward and without lifting the legs, see if you can put your left foot up to your left hand, place your back heel to the floor. Make sure you're not on a tight rope, bend your front knee and inhale, reach your arms up. Good, if you feel this in your low back, work on lifting your navel towards your spine a little bit more so it's like you're pulling your belly up away from the front of your front thigh bone. Make sure your front knee is pointing straight forward so you're grounding evenly between your inner heel and your outer heel and press into your back leg. See if maybe you can take your gaze up and bring your palms to touch if it's okay there. Okay, good, and then hands to the floor and we'll step back into down dog. And then Eugenie, you can come down onto your knees and take child's pose for a moment, hips back towards your heels. So um, warrior one, again, bent leg pose. So it's very heat building, all bent leg poses, warrior two, chair pose, warrior one, side angle, all of those poses build a lot of heat in the body. So they're great for doing to build strength in the legs, to build heat in your body. So warming up at the beginning of a practice. Um, a, this pose in particular is also really good for opening up your hip flexors, so your quadriceps of the back leg, building strength in the front leg, and then lengthening the front body. And the arms in that overhead plane is actually really good for opening your shoulders and your upper back. So there's a lot of really wonderful benefits that you can get from Warrior One, but I wanna emphasize the fact that it's really tricky to do a good Warrior One. So. Remember that if warrior one doesn't feel great to you, you can always practice the high lunge with your back heel lifted or the low lunge with your back knee on the floor if high lunge feels tricky in terms of balance. But we're gonna try warrior one one more time from downward facing dog. And again, if you're at home and you're watching this and you haven't gotten on your hands and knees or on your mat yet to try it, I would love it if you would try it with us for this last time because it's actually a really fun Super challenging, but wonderful pose with lots of benefits. Okay, so as you come into down dog, we'll do it on this last time from downward facing dog. Pause in your down dog, press into your palms and try to straighten your arms here. Okay, find your breath. One of the reasons why I like coming into it from downward facing dog is there isn't so much of a question mark about how long the length of stance is. If you have a correct length of stance in your down dog, watch here for a moment, Eugenie's gonna lift her heels and step her right foot all the way up between her hands right to the right edge of her mat and place her back heel to the floor, then you're in the perfect stance. So you kind of don't have to worry about how long your stance is. Inhale, you're gonna rise up and reach your hands up towards the ceiling. You don't have to look up, you can look straight ahead. And what I want you to practice here for just the next couple breaths is straightening the back leg, push into your back heel, bend your front knee so your knee's right on top of your ankle, that's it, and then lift your rib cage just like you would do if you were in high lunge. Stretch your fingertips towards the ceiling and then do your best to spin your back inner thigh towards the ceiling a little higher and to turn your hips to square as forward as you can. Okay, good, hands to the floor around your front foot and we'll step back into downward facing dog. Pause in your down dog, take a breath. And notice the difference between your two sides. So always when we do one pose, one side, and then the other, there's usually a little bit of a difference, and sometimes it's just really good to be aware of that, paying attention to sensation in your body. And we'll take your left foot and step forward. So remember the length of stance from down dog, foot comes forward, back heel to the floor, a little width, so we don't wanna be lined up on a tightrope, good. And then as you push into your back heel, Try to bend your front knee a little deeper as you reach your hands straight up towards the ceiling. You can have your hands shoulder distance and the gaze can be directly in front of you. And then focus on from your waistline down, going down towards the ground and from your waistline 
up, reaching even higher towards the ceiling. You want to use your breath to support you in the pose. If it feels comfortable, you can even let your head drop back and bring your palms together for the last breath. This is great. And then bring your hands to the floor, and we'll step right back into Downward Facing Dog. Pause in Downward Facing Dog. Take a nice deep breath as you reach your hips up and back. And then again, just come down onto your knees, and we'll take Child's Pose for a moment. So Warrior One, it's called Virabhadrasana One. And again, it's one of these warrior poses. So when I think about it, I think about really being a warrior, being strong, being engaged, bringing energy and strength into the body. So as you practice it, remember that sometimes just holding it for a couple breaths can be a lot. So if you're newer to yoga, you might come into the pose and take three to five breaths and then come out and switch sides like we were doing back and forth. If you're newer to yoga, you might try like we did at the beginning of this tutorial with the back heel lifted so that you don't actually have to have your back heel on the floor um, because it does make it quite a bit easier to do the high lunge, eventually over time building up to warrior one. But as you pay attention to your breath and as you move into the practice, you'll find that Warrior One is actually a really amazing pose where you might be able to find some really wonderful um, points of alignment and strength and energy. Okay, you can rise yourself up if you're good there. Thank you. Thank you all for being here and for watching the tutorial. Namaste. Thank you, Eugenie. Thank you so much. Namaste.